<laughs> Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesday. Where we can sit back, relax, Yay! take that midweek break, and talk about all the fun things that we found going on in the world of Linux and open source. Hi, everyone. Mm -hmm. I'm Vin Stone. Hello. That person <laughs> was Jill Bryant. <laughs> and the silent, shadowy, mysterious figure in the corner is one Pedro <laughs> Mateus. Hello. Hi. <laughs> I'm Pedro, man. Um, together with you. Hey, everyone <laughs> watching this live. Kind of being brilliant. Um, Wow. We got a lot of stuff to cover this week, right? Yeah. Mm, yes. The, the, this one's a chunky one. <laughs> it's a chunky yeah. one. Dude, <laughs> looking forward to it. It is our 200th episode, Joe. Yay! Yay! Yeah, I make sure to point that out. That's that's exciting. I don't have my Patrick Stewart acting gift handy, but go ahead. Oh, <laughs> it's just amazing. Two hundred. <sighs> wow. <laughs> so I I I've been here for the last half of that two hundred. <laughs> wow. That, ladies and gentlemen, was Jill's lead-in. Uh, no. What have you been no, doing, no, Jill? Come on. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was looking at a big I was looking in chat Squirrel. at the number two on yellow. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I got that distracted. Okay. So yeah, it's our two hundredth episode of LWW. And one of the cool things is I finally got my new three monitor gaming and broadcasting setup finished over the weekend. Uh, before I had three 30 inch monitors spanning landscape and now i have my newest 43 inch ultra hd monitor paired with two of my previous 30 inch monitors in portrait on either side and i'm so happy with how it turned out it's it's really great for doing this show and and um, everything i need for broadcasting and it was really awesome playing portal 2 on it at 6000 by 2160 resolution so I was pretty happy with that. <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> the highest res I've ever played Portal. <laughs> right on, right on. Uh, not a lot going on here. I did get curious because I was always looking for a way to save a buck. About this is, Consider this a public service announcement. If you see any network cards on eBay, then they're like, why are these like multi-port network cards? They're great. They're even low profile. Four ports, $8. I should buy. Don't. Um, <laughs> ultimately because they're going to be Rev 1.0 or Rev 1.0A of PCIe, which looks the same. Mm. It'll fit. Just probably not going to work unless you've got some older hardware. <laughs> when I say older hardware, I have like some Optiplex 3010s. These are not spring chickens. It doesn't work. Because I, I went and dug out one of my Sun Ultra 24s, which has a four port, uh, just an ATLS S1Q. And I was like, do you work in here? Nope. Do you work in here? Do you work in the Threadripper? Ha ha ha. LOL. No. And I tried it in the uh, Ryzen on the audio box. Nope. So I finally paid the iron price for some 10 G tech network cards. That's going to sort some, uh, since we're doing everything over, uh, VoIP. Do you call it VoIP data bits over the network? All of our audio stuff. I don't know. It's crazy engineering. It's mad I mean, sound. it is technically voice yeah. over IP. Right. So audio yes, over yeah, IP. yeah. I don't know. Let's just call it <laughs> Gary. Pedro, you didn't write anything. Shame on you. No, because there's really not been much going on. Uh, That's work great. Is, so yeah, let me tell me about space and meeting. Well, uh. One of the developers at GNOME had uh, <laughs> an issue with the definition of um, the term platform. And uh, I saw this article and it's like, oh, there is no, quote, Dude. Linux, end quote, platform. Dude, Pedro, all right. like, <laughs> okay, think about it. Think about this. Because we all make it a point when we see, like, if you look on the back of packaging and you see the little penguin thing. Mm-hmm. You're like, yay, that's awesome. You know, I saw it like in some little Vantech DAX game and I was like, oh, look at that. that what if you saw quotes around that? <laughs> what are you implying exactly? Right. Yes. Uh, and it's like, I saw the titles. That was the title of the article. It's like, oh, oh, that's as clickbaity as I've ever seen. And he goes on to debate that uh, in his definition, a platform is an operating system, a developer platform, a design language, and an app store. Why those four in specific and not something else? Because this is his opinion. And, uh, well, uh, in his opinion, Linux uh, is the kernel, uh, free desktop are the standards, and then you have the distros that comprise, uh, or that could comprise the rest of the elements in his definition of platform. 
Mm -hmm. And he says that Ubuntu, it's uh, as a distro, it almost fits. But in his opinion, the distro that actually fits is elementary. It's like, all right, cool. You like elementary and you have an issue with the definition of platform. Does he so like elementary you... more than app stores? Because I see app stores bringing up. It's like, hey, how's it doing, by the way, app stores? Mm. Yeah, the, 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 the app store seems to be a core uh, thing here. And elementary does have their own app store. Uh, and they do have a business model for that app store. So in his opinion, it is both elementary and Android. Those are the two quote unquote Linux platforms in his opinion but yeah the, his sole argument here is the definition of platform mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. being a pedant myself that is um, <laughs> very very pedantic of him <laughs> dude all right um i kind of expect this i didn't really expect it from the gnome blog because after anyone's like real first mm -hmm year into using linux like okay i'm using linux i got this this is great we're doing a thing then you're going to get like the ideas the article the speech of i know a way to fix linux you guys mm -hmm. which i'm like yes I, I, I foster that but i also foster that with like oh you're at that point now that's cool man we, yeah. we've all been there we have 100 yes. percent. it's a natural part of any linux loving human thing you doesn't don't want to be humanist but it's part of your journey that that's a thing you're gonna get you'll get over it trust me but it is sweet when mm -hmm. you see somebody it's like i know i, I know the solution like I, I remember covering that in the 90s and that's not any elitism it's like yes you're there but it'll pass trust me because i don't think linux i mean i agree linux is the kernel right we, we can all be like yes mm -hmm. okay that's it uh what is Linux? Is it distribution? Is the is the free desktop? That's all up in the air with me. I mean, I I don't think Linux is fragmented mm. itself, but the desktop sure is. Um, I kind of feel that. Oh, we'll get to that. Yeah, we will. <laughs> but I feel that that's how we like it. <laughs> yeah, you know, we like that option. We like that choice and all this stuff. And you know, anything can become a platform if you apply enough removal of choice from it. If you lock it into <laughs> yes. a nice, perfect little cube, you're like, this is great. All the freedom in the world. We can do exactly what they tell us we can. Um, some people look for that, though. But I kind of I kind of feel that you're going to be grateful for all that choice and that variety. Because broken record time, desktop as a service is common. It is. Whether mm -hmm. or not you believe it, it yeah. it's a thing. Yeah, it's definitely um, already here in many ways. Um, but yeah, isn't Linux the platform of choice for the cloud AI server side and everything in between? Everyone calls that a platform. <laughs> so yes, it, it, it is. Dude, the, you got to use free... air quotes when you say platform. Yeah, yes. <laughs> it, is, it is the free operating system, but it's it's that it, it's it's that ability to be able to develop on and um, you know and and put everything out there uh, for the world to see, you know, in my opinion, as a platform. But, and, you know, this wouldn't exist if it weren't for the variety and flexibility of many distros, desktops, and apps that are specialized for many different tasks, whether it be for systems on chips or supercomputers. So, yeah, Linux is a platform to me. <laughs> Yeah, the, the last point I have to <laughs> offer is uh, move those quotes from Linux nope. to platform. I'm not going to do it. Because that's the point that uh, you're trying to make with this platform. Uh, listen, eh? listen yeah. I'm from GNOME. If you keep that up, I'm removing another configuration option. <laughs> oh, great. Uh, GNOME tweak becomes even more essential. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you think, oh, oh you, you don't like right click, huh? Uh -huh. no. That's kind of beautiful, man. That is one of the things. Everybody's got their thoughts, ideas, hints, and opinions about that. And yeah. That's one of the good things. We don't all have to mm -hmm. agree. You know, you can have civil nope. discourse. This is how we solve things, even though society yeah. tends to forget that. And you're like, hey, I think differently. Let's see if we can come up with something together. Yeah, to definitely. Know. Like, <laughs> no, the moment cinnamon. anyone else thinks about anything else, yes. Take two. <laughs> um, Ubuntu cinnamon. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, uh, yes, let's not call it mint, shall we? Because uh, this isn't mint. This is, uh, or this is a distro that is uh, trying to be an official spin of Ubuntu, but like all the other spins that are based on their um, desktop environments, this one is attempting to be, well, the official spin for Cinnamon. And you might be going, but Linux Mint is already Linux uh, is already uh, <laughs> Ubuntu based, and uh, it uses Cinnamon. That's nowadays. That's basically its whole selling point. Wait, we, so we can call it Cinnabuntu. <laughs> <laughs> I guess calling it Kubuntu with a C would be a little too confusing, yeah. maybe? <laughs> a little bit, yeah. <laughs> would that be, wait, could, well, would that be a little too sentimental? <laughs> <laughs> that was a good attempt at a pun there, yes, that was a good attempt. Yes. Uh, but yeah, no, this is why uh, people keep bringing up the uh, fragmentation argument, because yes, let's have another official Ubuntu spin that's basically mint but without you know all the strings that mint attaches to their distro mm. fine all right bring it yeah mm, we're talking <laughs> about that like, <laughs> so yes. it's uh Ubuntu with uh different dm instead does it do anything extra though not right now no mm. yeah at least not the publicly <laughs> available uh download <laughs> <laughs> Which you can download. Uh, there is a link to the uh, their uh, source for project uh, source forge project page, uh, and you can actually take it for a spin. But yeah, right now it's just Ubuntu, but with cinnamon instead of no. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, the founder and CEO of Ubuntu Cinnamon is Joshua Pasayich, and he's been actually working really hard on making Ubuntu Cinnamon an official flavor of Ubuntu, and he's contributed a lot to the cinnamon project, you know, for for this distro to to get it officially validated by Ubuntu and uh, Popey and Wimpy. So, and I, I've been hearing a lot about its progress on Big Daddy Linux, and I'm looking forward to thoroughly testing the new Ubuntu Cinnamon 1910 uh, this week, actually. I'm gonna be heavily testing it. <laughs> well, you don't want to looking lightly to test that. it. Um... Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's when you put it on a USB drive and then you look at the drive, it's like, yes. Yeah, yeah. No, really? I'm going to do a full cold. install. And... Playing with it in a VM. It's like, I've thoroughly tested it. It's like, you haven't even installed it. No, 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 no. It. No. VMs don't count. Uh, yeah. Survey time. Yeah, so you can sh help shape Ubuntu's future by taking the Ubuntu 20.04 LTS survey, which is running until January 10th, 2020. Canonical wants to learn what people like about Ubuntu and how it can improve. And they would like feedback from users of Ubuntu as well as non-users alike. And they're really, one of the reasons for doing that is this is there, they, this will help them find out if there are trends in open source that they have just miss, have been missing in their distro. So uh, they're really interested in what the community thinks, uh, whether you're an Ubuntu user or not. And they want an honest opinion. I've already started writing answers for my survey for them, but it's one of my favorite distros. But there, there are some things I would, I would like to fix. <laughs> I would like it fixed. <laughs> yeah, to your point about uh, the trends that they may be missing. How about not entirely killing 32-bit compatibility just because? Nope. <laughs> yeah. That's a no <laughs> new kid canonical yeah. from Orbit. <laughs> Somebody has to do it. I'm just yeah, saying. Yeah, Apple did it. How's that working out for him? <laughs> hey, man, I want my 64-bit Steam client. Also, yeah. Also, yeah, I guess Valve does need a bit of a kick in the shins for that one. <laughs> chaos. I looked at it. I mean, there's a couple of, like, you know, page one, you look at me, it's like, how much do you like Ubuntu? Which, you know, ranges from I love Ubuntu to I don't actually use Ubuntu. And, you know, uh, primary operating systems and the like. Mm -hmm. So I'm just assuming, you know, they're going to give you the option, like, bring back Mir. That was cool. You're doing something yes. different. 100% behind that. <laughs> I, I started <laughs> filling this out. I'm probably not the target audience. I do have um, Ubuntu in the studio. is running Jackbox, but... It's running 18.04, so it's like, you know what? Mm -hmm. Call me in a decade. Um, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I I took the survey and I am running uh, Neon, which is uh, Ubuntu based. But yes, much like Ven, it is um, 1804 based. Mm. So yeah, uh, the yeah. <laughs> I hope they don't listen to me because it's been demonstrated time and time again that I don't know what the hell I'm on about most of the time. So. Hey. <laughs> oh. Oh. Picture in picture in Firefox. <laughs> yeah, so last week we talked about the newly released Firefox 71. And now with the Firefox 72 beta, you can get one of those cool features that wasn't released for Linux yet, which is a convenient picture in picture mode. So you can watch a YouTube or Netflix video pop out while browsing the web. And you can also do this through Firefox, uh, the current release Firefox 71 stable by um, enabling the picture in picture flag um, in the about con config and under preferences. So that's really easy to do also. And yesterday I actually watched Pedro's stream open more when with it and it worked great and really nice. There, there isn't a resizing function yet for the window, but I'm sure at some point that will happen. <laughs> Sounds really neat, doesn't it? Yeah. That does. Oh, man. Yeah, it's convenient. <laughs> the future's here, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, because here's been my experience. Just my experience with Picture and Picture has been anywhere you move that, that window, is the exact location you're going to need to get to in five minutes. Guaranteed. <laughs> there, there's no way around this. There's some law <laughs> applied to whatever that window is. Then you can, oh, let's move it over here. Whatever you move it to, be prepared to find something under that window. The Although <laughs> if most of the websites, they're very vertical down the middle. So if you scooch it off to one side, you could probably get away with it. One would think. One would think. Yeah. Um. <laughs> well, well, then you just have to have to utilize all your monitors. That helps a lot. That's what I did. Oh, uh, Jill, I am right now. I don't have room for anything else. <laughs> yeah, I know you do. I'm yeah. utilizing it. Yes. The only time I really play around with picture in picture. I mean, I've had picture in picture on uh, one of these 4K monitors, uh, like what, four or five years. Used it once, uh, used it at twice when I got a Chromecast. I was like, oh, that's neat. Okay, we'll never use that again. Um, <laughs> that's about it, man. M maybe on a tablet when I'm watching Twitch, I got something open in the little yeah. window and if I'm like in Google mm -hmm. Docs or something. But that's still a cool option for people that want yeah. to have it, right? Yeah, uh, and if you uh, if you do browse the web like most people do, which is you have a YouTube video going on in the background, now you can have the video there not just the audio which is nice but uh one of the things i noticed because yeah the, the update for firefox came down a couple of days ago for for neon and, and i guess 1804 um the private internet access extension that i have installed is now permanently on mm. so i'm always on a vpn i don't know if this is intentional or not I'm guessing not, uh, but I can turn it off. I can change region and it'll like disconnect me from one region, connect me to the other one. But if I try to just turn it off to just like, nope, don't use the VPN, just do your thing regularly. Nope, can't do that. So it just really, really loves you. <laughs> Apparently. Well, I did pay for the private internet access um, three year plan so eh, i yeah. guess i'm putting it to use one way or another <laughs> hey man you gotta look i mean you had to expect it to be a little bit of a pia right yes <laughs> um pita <laughs> disney plus now works in linux after oh, drm yay. tweets so they finally just <laughs> dialed it down to your standard netflix level of drm so you can use your browser to watch disney plus uh you know what hey it works. I tried it and it launches. So I immediately went back to watching it on a tablet because it's 2019. Uh, <laughs> that, that's all I got to say about it. I mean, I will confirm. Yes, I, it does work and you can watch The Mandalorian. Also, if you've already cut the mouse, that streaming check, go watch the Imagineer series. That's actually really good because I was desperately mm. trying to find something else to justify the subscription. I was like, there's got to be something <laughs> <Yeah>. else on this. <laughs> and that was pretty good. I dug it. All right. 
Yeah, no, uh, mm. I, I big big thank you to Disney for not being massive knobs about this. They mm -hmm. very much appreciated. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and, and same here. Good on you, Disney. Now your animators and developers can watch the content they create and enjoy the adorable <laughs> musings of Baby Yoda. <laughs> so he just walks around. No, it's really soup. good. Because <laughs> yeah, I mean they have you know Linux is on the desktop everywhere at Disney, so this just makes sense. And I knew they'd get around to it. <laughs> they have to. <laughs> but you do have to enable DRM in your browser. So, mm -hmm. which if you're watching yeah. Netflix or Amazon Prime, you already have. I don't know. Um, do you? Yeah. Do you, do, well, no, no, no. I'm, I'm getting to a, a second thought on this is do you watch a like Netflix or Amazon Prime like on the piece? Which, you know, yes. you would think a, mm -hmm. Jill and I would because we both have 43 inch monitors. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I usually have one of the quadrants of this UHD monitor here. Mm -hmm. It's Netflix or Prime or YouTube. Mm. That's like the dedicated corner here. <laughs> That's neat, weirdo. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Man. I have all this screen real estate. I got to use it somehow. <laughs> Mine's yeah. always full, man. <laughs> <laughs> that and coming in the idea of coming in here and cutting everything on to watch something on Disney that's not happening ever <laughs> I mean if I just want to watch something yeah I don't cut this all on I yeah I use Chromebook Chromebook or TV or something yeah, yeah. That, I think that maybe is more to the point of what I'm trying to get at like, oh I just want to watch something mm -hmm. let's go start everything up and but yeah, now you can have a TV box that runs Linux uh, and on top of your Netflix and your Primes you have Disney Plus mm -hmm. sweet yay Another thing you can get is OBS Studio, but I already have that pin. Here's another way to get it. Uh, there's a continuous build. It's in a little bit of a beta. There'll be a link in the show notes, as with everything else we talk about. App image for OBS, because some people are like, man, this would be real easy if I could just download an app image. You're thinking, why would I want to deal with that? Because you don't have to install a store. You don't have to get repos. You can just yes. download the app image. Yep. CHMOD X, that critter, run it. And you know what? I tested it on my 10.2 Debian system. It launched. It worked. It had MD in Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. It picks up on wherever your um, FFmpeg is uh, compiled with. Mm -hmm. So even if you have that uh, quick sync enabled. Um, Vappy. FFmpeg with the VA API with the quick sync bits actually enabled, it'll pick up on those. Which is nice. I actually tried it on the um, one of the laptops that I have quick sync enabled just for the sake of testing it. Uh, and it's like, oh, mm. quick sync. Nice. <laughs> it's nice. I'm glad it's there. And most Yay. importantly, do not bug anyone in the OBS Discord Linux support channel about this. It is unofficial. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> so yep. I often think if I'm in a situation to where... I have to do file management from the terminal. I've messed up. I've messed up, Pedro, <laughs> and I put myself in that situation, and I don't deserve a file manager. Part of my penance <laughs> is getting things sorted. But And yes, there is an argument to be made that if you've gotten to that point, maybe a little crutch wouldn't help. <laughs> it's like if you've managed <laughs> to destroy your foot, might as well grab something that'll let you walk. A little bit faster. <laughs> so, yeah, this is N N N, or noise is not noise. <laughs> yes. And um, it is, uh, <laughs> if you really love the command line interface and uh, to the point where you actually crack open a terminal to do your file management things, this is very much a file manager that will let you do that. And it's got, it's multi pane, obviously. It looks like it has Midnight to be Commander you... ate some Skittles. Yes it, yes, it is very, it very colorful. It, it yeah. requires a few more um, emoji, I think. It, it is 2019 <laughs> after all. And they have a bunch of uh, plugins already. And, well, it is compatible with the noise uh, plugins. So, yeah, it, it, yeah, it's a CLI file manager. Does, yeah. does it have a video editor? It's not Emacs uh, level yet, oh. <laughs> but you can launch a video editor from it. <laughs> yeah, you can launch a video editor from it and use it that way, or even even do Mencoder on the on the on the CLI. 
<laughs> so, so, <laughs> but I really like, um, you know, how fast and small it is. It's only around 33 kilobytes. So it's the smallest file manager you can get. And yes, smaller even than Midnight Commander, which is one of my favorites as well. And I, I like launching, I actually like launching videos uh, from it. Um, it. It will use a, oh, it, it, it defaults to MPV, but it'll use any um, default video editor you have on your system. And I also enjoy uh, launching text files via gedit or less. And actually, you know, a lot of the, the low profile file managers you have to set up to auto launch uh, within programs. And this one you don't because it has all the plugins there. And that's what's really, really cool about it, actually. <laughs> so, so what you're saying really is nice. it basically ignores all the MIME types that you have set up and oh, yeah. uses its own thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you right. can't. So, you know, Jill, did you actually it. try uh, NNN? Yes. Did you <laughs> try it? Okay. Uh, does it have, because I know that Midnight mm -hmm. Commander does have mouse support if you click on it, if you launched it through a uh, yeah, terminal no, emulator? No, no. I... Well, you know what? I've always used NNN with the arrow keys, so I never oh, even tried okay. the mouse with it. <laughs> All <so>. right, fair. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I'm really impressed with this file manager. I've been using it for a long time, so it's one of my go-tos. In X. <laughs> Okay. Yay! <laughs> if, if you ever catch me running like a CLI, a incurses type file manager with X windows, take me out. Something's malfunction. <laughs> I'll take that as a thing. Oh, Ven's been kidnapped. All right. Yep. That's a signal, man. That's our secret message. Oh. <laughs> Deep fake. Um... You don't want to be elite hacks or Ven. <laughs> yeah, I do. That's why I wouldn't have X open. Yeah. <laughs> LS all the things. Right. Yeah. It's like if I'm an X man, I'm drag and drop support. Are you kidding me? Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> beautiful people. Ten years ago, Linux was yep. just as awesome as it is right now. I'm going to be honest with you, but somebody would beg to differ. <laughs> yeah. So this is actually a really. Um... You know, I thought a very well written article. You can not, talk about I don't it. think I'm going to make this picture do this because <laughs> okay. I'm like, ah. <laughs> not, ah, not everything. Yeah, right. <laughs> not everything is accurate in it, which Ben and Pedro will will point out. But it has a lot of truism, and and this is you know this this writer's journey, um, ten years of using Linux, and you know the, the about the challenges we faced with Linux over the last last two years, and yes, gone are the days of in smotting sound drivers to get sound cards working and of using windows drivers wrappers for getting wireless internet MPS devices working <laughs> yes yes exactly <laughs> and you know i think this is a great article for linux users to read new and experienced alike to see how far linux has come and many challenges it has faced and, you know, look where Linux is today. We are spoiled by the most plug and play, flexible and freedom of choice OS in the world. And so this is this writer's uh, journey um, into the problems that he had with Linux. And some of us have, have encountered these and some of us haven't. So it's uh, definitely, you know, very well written article. And uh, Ven had a lot to say about it. <laughs> yeah, and I kind of agree with the first point that Ven's going to make uh, there, because uh, as someone who had a chance to test both the NVIDIA side and the ATI side oh, back yeah, in the day, because mm -hmm. we're talking about... Hey, we have about uh, yeah, like five years of that years recorded ago. live, so... Yes, yeah. <laughs> you can go you back and uh, <laughs> watch uh, Linux Gamecast Weekly from 10 years ago. Well, not 10 years ago, but... Yeah, about five years ago or six years Don't ago. Don't tell them about and the alternate timeline. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, one of the things that I do miss from uh, back then is, say you've got a brand new laptop. And the first thing I did was like, Linux, see what's working, mm -hmm. see what's not working. And I'd spend like the first two weeks actually getting everything because half of the stuff wouldn't work at all. So I'd Yay. spend like, a week or two actually getting everything to work. It's like, mm -hmm. yes, I did a thing. That's... I made this all work. So I, I yeah. kind of miss that. There's definitely yeah, something that's to be part of the fun. said to that. Yeah. You know, I've reported multiple <laughs> times like, that was too easy. That was kind of boring. At 
Yeah. We're definitely at a point where there's no point in clearing off a weekend for a project. No. Those days are gone. You can usually get it done in like an hour. <laughs> but yeah, the first thing I'm going to take issue with is like the NVIDIA drivers a decade ago being crashy back then. Mm. Simply because they were. They, they were, were not. They, yeah. I, I don't They were you, not. I have this mm -hmm. nasty habit of using stuff that works. That's that's what I'm looking <laughs> for. That's the word. Guess what? I mean, it just worked. You plug it in, you install the driver, you're done with it. Yes, a decade ago. That was the process right there. I'm installing NVIDIA drivers the same way I was 10 years ago from the run file. <laughs> and it's still working. Um, that said... There were probably some issues. I mean, There's probably, what do you mean probably? There's definitely issues on mobile oh, and laptops. Yeah. <laughs> but with like Optimus and all that. That's, I'll give you that one. But um, Well, there's a reason that that poster exists behind you. Yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm a big fan of Nicolas Cage. So. Oh, no, the yes. other one. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> the other thing was, it was like, well, you know, 10 years ago, Flash was horribly out. To, man, listen, man, Flash was fully supported. This is one thing Linux had no. was Flash support. And that was never, there was a, no point where you couldn't watch YouTube on Linux since. Mm -hmm. Now, that said, Pedro will definitely agree with me. Uh, a lot of Flash videos had what we lovingly called Smurf mode for a minute. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and sometimes you could fix it by refreshing the page like oh it it it's that's the correct color yeah, All right. yeah. Or you could disable um hardware acceleration and flash then sometimes the smurfs would go away then you would find yourself longing for everything to be blue <laughs> and you would re-enable it so that's the different thing gaming that's legit what do we have 10 years ago we had humble and we had quake clones really good at first version shooters was humble mm -hmm. around uh, 10 years ago close yeah, well, yeah it like might have nine. been like eight, but yeah. 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 Uh, so, I remember uh, Never Winter Nights. That was around. Mm -hmm. Never Winter Nights. I mean, there were a couple of things. You know, I get sick and tired of playing all my Loki games because that's what we had. Every now and then, like Linux <laughs> Gaming Publishing would put out something. Desura. Desura was worth it 10 mm. years ago. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. So let's see. What else do we have in this? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Virtualization. That's one thing that was brought up in this article. Virtualization, um, using Linux as your, that, that's solid. That's solid. Mm -hmm. In the late nineties, I was running Windows 95 yeah, that was, and VMware. Yeah. Like that was mm -hmm. done, but Hey man, each to their own. I think it is a very cute article and it's an interesting look. Here's what, here's the value I've taken out of it legitimately. To me, it's an interesting look at someone who was getting into Linux for the first time 10 years ago. If you, mm -hmm. Which is fair. Yeah, no, I only you, started using Linux, what, 14 years ago? Take it from that approach and you read it like that. Yeah. And you're like, okay, that's an interesting take. Uh, coming from, yeah. from like 10 years ago, I was like, well, I was already using Linux for 10 years before that. You're like, yeah, if you see it through that <laughs> lens, you're like, you kind of were missing, you misremembering some things there. You just didn't know some things at that point. But yeah. still, it's a good read. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I recommend it. Unlike what yes. we're about to talk about next. <laughs> do you have the uh, the graphic queued up? Because apparently Microsoft totally uh, hearts Linux. They do, baby. Fairness. You know it. Oh. Mm. Yay. Woo -woo. Son, son, son. I'm bleeding for you, Microsoft. Oh. Beautiful. Tell us what you... Go away, Microsoft. See, I haven't even started and you already get on my nerves. Um, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Microsoft Teams is now available on Linux. This is a native port. Do you hear it? That's the entirety of Redmond laughing. No, of course not. It's, uh, what is it, Pedro? Tell me. It's Electron. <laughs> it's a web browser. It's literally a Chromium window with the uh, Microsoft theme to it. That's it. <laughs> it's Teams. And it's, if you ever wanted a uh, self-contained web browser uh, in, in an application, boy, do they have a surprise for you. It's Slack. It's Microsoft mm -hmm. Slack. Uh, the executive director at the Linux Foundation says 2019 has been another incredible year. Microsoft Teams for Linux. With this announcement, Microsoft is bringing its hub. This is the first technic air office app for Linux. To Linux, I'm thrilled to see Microsoft's recognition of how companies, educational institutes, are using Linux to transform their work culture. Man, no one uses Teams because they want to, so you might want to back up on that a little bit. Um, yeah. <laughs> Pedro, you've logged into it. It does work, right? 
Yep, it does. Uh, since we do, um, well, there's a push at work to start using Teams because uh, Skype for Business is going away. So mm. everything that Skype for Business does now is going to be handled through t uh, Teams. Uh, so I launched it, put in my work credentials, and yeah, everything I tried, I didn't actually try the calls, but um, everything like the embedded um, Word and Excel for web those all work just fine. You can browse through all the content. You can see everything. Uh, OneNote works. It syncs with everything that you have on there. Uh, you can pull your files from uh, OneDrive. It's all there. Everything I tested was, in fact, working. I mean, it's an Electron mm. app. Why wouldn't it? <laughs> Microsoft finds a way, yeah. baby. Jill, you're the number. No. You're the Microsoft fan here on the show, so. What do you guys <laughs> no, about? but I do have to say this is huge. This is a really big deal, and you know, goes a long way for Linux adoption and businesses that use Microsoft apps exclusively. And you know, this is also huge because it's the first step in Microsoft releasing their whole Office 365 suite of apps for Linux. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, we'd like Adobe to do that as well. <laughs> and um, who would have thought that the cure for Microsoft would come from, well, Microsoft. <laughs> so <laughs> you don't have to use someone else's apps to use Microsoft, uh, you know, file extensions. And <laughs> so this, this is actually a big deal. <laughs> it is interesting. That yeah. I, yesterday on Twitter, when they made this announcement, I saw a bunch of people's like, what's going on? <laughs> what's going on? It's like, yeah, strange times, these. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, when this such is the way of transitioning into a services company, we, we've we seen this playbook. Uh, this yeah. little company you might have heard of called IBM. Um, <laughs> they kind of didn't. You know, they moved into a services and Microsoft's doing the thing. And, you know, you're going to see web apps. You're going to see uh, desktop. You're going to be able to get you some desktop. Oh, I want to rent some Microsoft desktop. This is coming. This yeah. is coming. You're going to yeah. pay for access to the Windows desktop. That'll give you access to the Windows apps. Well, you got that. I mean, you're looking like uh, we're old and we're stuck in our ways. I mean, you got to understand that, you know, Every company now wants to <laughs> sell you a, you know, Adobe is huge on that. You know, yeah. They're like, hey, man, no, yep. you get the creative suite or whatever it's called for X amount of monies per month or whatever per year, and no refunds, by the way. And that mm -hmm. that's just going to be plowing forward because yeah. you can sell that as a value proposition to a student. Be like, okay, you don't have to spend a gang of money, but give us some coin every month, affordable amount, yep. and you can use everything. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of sad mm -hmm. about that. But <laughs> hey, yeah. if you want to <laughs> cheer us up, head over to LinuxGameCast.com <laughs> and smash that donate button, fam. Um, we got a lot of you <laughs> that do. Uh, we got a gang of Money things. does buy happiness around here. It absolutely, <laughs> and friendship, and love, and penguins. Delicious, delicious. <laughs> pe wait, we don't eat them anymore. Um, we have Patreon, we have LibrePay, we have merchandise. Speaking of merchandise, what do we have? Uh, do we have the thing too? Ah, there it is. Look at this. Yeah. Shilling. <laughs> Shilling. We have uh, mm -hmm. Genghis shirts up to and including the Use Me Penguin t-shirt and the limited edition, which is genuinely that goes on for uh, Santa time. Is that what people call yeah. it? I don't keep track of holidays. Very <laughs> yes. Hello, Santa. Yeah. And here's the old one from last year, yeah. the experimental <laughs> one that we had to to stop selling because it was yeah. misprinted. A little bit jank. <laughs> awesome. But it is a collector's item. <laughs> That's what I told Jill and then she didn't refund it. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool if you want to wear some of our merch. Uh, we got a gang. The best way to do it is Patreon. We have a new Patreon this week. You get your name into credits. You get a custom RSS feed if you like what we do. All of our specials mm -hmm. and our pre-shows that don't go out for the public that you can hop into an hour early, especially on Saturdays. And you get the uncut versions of Five days early, not a full week, but five days. Uh, oh, and um, I'm about to do another thing in my podcasting series. I have that for the people supporting nice. us. That's how we pay the bills here. But I like to throw a little extra, and this one's going to be covering Mix Minus. So you'll be able to talk over mm -hmm. your guest or your co-hosts like we do. That's the best way to do things. <laughs> but who's that new beautiful <laughs> patron we have helping us out and joining this team? Jill? Yeah, Mix. his name is Carl. And um, I, 
I do know a few Carls, but I don't know if I know this one. So, but thank you so much, Carl. I thought you said you um, knew all Carls. Oh, yeah. Carl! <laughs> Carl! Yeah. I, I'm looking over your CV right here. It says I know all Carls. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, Carl's stomach was definitely making the rumblies. <laughs> that price yeah. was baby's hands. Um, oh. Keep being awesome. Keep being beautiful. Uh, everyone that's subscribing to us on Twitch and however that works, that's cool too. We are here five days a week mm -hmm. at your pleasure. And uh, what do we got? Wish zones. Mm -hmm. If you're curious about anything in the studio, yeah. go to our web zone, <laughs> go to the about section. Everything that is stuck together for the streaming uh, thing that we put together is there. So if you want to part that out, we do have a wish zone. Pedro's got one. Uh, mm -hmm. I have one for the studio. Jill's got one. Jordan's got one. If you want to make our holidays full of Aww. stuff, yeah. <laughs> support rampant consumerism. That's what we're trying to do here on our open source That's what show. we're all about yeah. here anyway, so. Yes. <laughs> okay, let's get into a slice of pie. Ooh, pie. Ooh. It's a very tall pie this time around. Well, it's yeah. just the one uh, story about uh, pie, but uh, this one is, it's the NAS pie. It's, um... Well, you've probably heard of the hats that support um, multiple, um, well, they support multiple setup um, drives all at once. And you just mount that on top of the Pi and then you have to sort of come out with your own configuration as to how you're going to lay out the drives. You can just have them out in the open like uh, they show in the pictures there. Alex, I'll put or... 200 on, on top of each other. Yes. <laughs> I mean, unless you're going to make you like an have... H or like make a little card. Yeah, house. you could have uh, actual hard drives all vibrating on top of one another. It sounds yeah. great. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it is. Um, it's all very well and good. But if you'd like an enclosure, like, uh, say, let's call it a NAS enclosure, you could get yourself one for a measly, measly 100 pounds. And it's about uh, half the height of a uh, bottle of Coke there. And it'll house um, four um, two and a half inch uh, hard drives uh, hanging from as if they were like on a clothes rack. Um, here's, here's the and problem. It, here's the problem with that. Because everybody that's watching the video version was like, what? And they looked at it and they're like, that's not bad looking. Yeah, it's, it's nice. not bad looking. No, <laughs> yeah. no, it, it's pricey, but it, yeah, it's it's it doesn't look terrible at all. And uh, you can see like the extra USB ports on the uh, on the hat on top of the Raspberry Pi default. You can ports. see the decided lack of the hole at the top for the fan. Yeah, that's yeah. The thing. it could use some vents around the top for the fan. just a couple. <laughs> No, no. You, you you have to bring up spinning hard drives to optimal temperature of burning before you could... Okay, maybe with the SSDs you could get around to it, since they all, uh, if you've ever actually paid attention to the temperature readout on an SSD, they all get to, like, between 30 and 40, and mm -hmm. that's where they stay. So if it's SSDs, you're good. If they're hard drives... <sighs> Yeah, there's better be good drives. <laughs> well, I'm gonna look yeah. at that, man. Well, if, if you have them to spin down, because that's a, that's a toit toit enclosure, and the way that you're sitting with the board, and you think about if you go, most of you are listening, it's four, you know, spinning this stack vertically, yep. mm -hmm. and sandwiched together very tightly. Tightly, but yeah. it it's like a if you just put a little uh, like baby mac and you know like back case on it and didn't have cheese grater holes in it but it looks mm -hmm. really good i like it even at 99 bucks i'm like eh but that that's especially without any ventilation for the um fan head at the top that's just a quick way to kill hard drives mm -hmm. yes yes it is yeah, that's it is, like actually. like a vent on the top <laughs> plastic there and even if it didn't have a fan just actually using the heat convection to like pull air, fresh air in from the bottom because there are some vents at the bottom. Mm -hmm. There's like mm -hmm. those cuts at the bottom. Yeah. But yeah, it needs a way for the air to get out in the top. That, yeah. that That's not how thermodynamics work. <laughs> Heat rises. Work. <laughs> it, I mean, hot air rises, right? Not according to yeah. them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, clearly. So well, clearly I thought this the solution was cool is to drill some cooling holes know. into the hard drive. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! No, yeah, yeah. no. Do it. no. Put a racing straight right through the PCB too. No. 
<laughs> well, I was impressed with this uh, project for one uh, price. Uh, network attached storage systems are actually quite expensive. <laughs> and, you know, you could go for the Drobos, which are uh, several hundred dollars to a thousand. <laughs> yes. And this is, Speaking this, of expensive, this, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And this is your cheapest option. You know, make your own Raspberry Pi version. You don't even have to buy their case or anything. Just do it yourself. And I, I think it's awesome. <laughs> even with the Pi Hat, you would be looking at a maximum sustained uh, transfer of about 400 megs on that. So this, mm -hmm. this is nothing yep. you'd want for anything that you need in a hurry. In a hurry, yeah. <laughs> no. And yeah, it is uh, 100 uh, it's a hundred dollars or a hundred pounds if you're over here. Um, but you do get like the enclosure and the hat and everything else, just not the Raspberry Pi 4. Mm. So Thank it you. is, it, it's not, you know, completely egregious, but it is a bit pricey for a Raspberry yeah. Pi enclosure. <laughs> Pedro, what if we're at the end of the show and I'm done screaming at my monitor or my pod playing <laughs> device and I want to tell you the right way to do something that you said was that was wrong during the episode? Yeah. Well, uh, you could <laughs> uh, smoke signal? take, yes, you could make some smoke signals. Yeah. Uh, you can use your oven. If you don't have like a place that you can start a fire, you can use the oven. It's fine. Um, no promises that I'll see that. But hey, if you'd like to make sure that I do see that, you can go to linuxcamecast.com, hit the contact button and fill out the form. The show that you want to send your feedback to, so it shows up here on Wednesday, is LWDW, so make sure you pick uh, that. Uh, that's it. Let us know about your pie projects, about your anything that you've been doing that's even tangentially related to Linux. Uh, if you do have some quarrels about something that we may have raised during the show, mm -hmm. that's fair game. This is how you, you learn. You can also send mm -hmm. some hate mail for Saturday. If, like. <laughs> if you get something wrong, that, that's definitely yeah. a thing. Um, I'm always like that. I always try to balance it. Like, you got something wrong on, mm -hmm. you know, that XKCD, but... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> it, it's real. It is real. Um, Mike G. Uh, talking about lead hacks, man. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Kali Linux has an undercover Windows 10 mode. Your coworkers will never suspect. Mr. Robot approves. Show 199 and counting. It seems like only yesterday. And Pedro, I'm pleased to help sponsor your mayhem anytime. Thanks for another great show, Mike G. <laughs> Aww. Still Thank here. you, Mike G. <laughs> Still yes. waiting for um, <laughs> the fine, fine folks behind CKB next to figure out yeah. what exactly is going on with the firmware in this mouse. The mouse. Because, yeah, yeah it's not um, straightforward. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. We love Mike G. <laughs> hey man, that's cool. I mean, I, I mm -hmm. hope hopefully before the eventual heat death of the universe, or maybe you'll check next time before putting something on your wish list that doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> I put it on my wish list because I wasn't expecting anyone to buy anything from it. It's like I put it there. It's like okay, okay. You since see, Mike, CKB next Mike, is a thing. Mike, you're doing the flying spaghetti <laughs> monsters work. You've taught the boy a lesson. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> That's got kind of a brilliant. I figured sooner or later that's going to work, so I put it there and I would pick it up eventually. Thanks, Mike. Mm. <laughs> no, I don't have to. <laughs> I'm next. Um, I'm talking about the droops. Uh, K1 Linux cast writes, wait, I was talking about this last week, man. We're talking about WordPress. Yeah, we with Farble S. Drupal. Yeah. It's like people mm -hmm. pay to have Drupal sites converted to WordPress? Question mark, exclamation point. This mm -hmm. is how you know they mean business. Um, I've been working with Drupal sites since 6.x and found WordPress to be more of a pain with regard to customization, so I've never spent enough time using it. What about it do you prefer over Drupal? Another great show, LGC. Looking forward to 200. Guess what? 200. Yay. Um, Yay. <laughs> Woohoo. <laughs> Woohoo. <laughs> <laughs> the common case, this is, we're, A, we're talking like mid-2000s, like 2006 onward, um, which is not something I deal with anymore. But I would normally run into somebody who just got suckered into a Drupal site, not realizing like, you need somebody to maintain this, or even better, they would have like a headless install or something like that. Mm. No idea. Everything was out of date. All the plugins are like, how do I maintain this manually? Because at the time you did. However, this little upstart thing called WordPress uh, did, you know, basic end user things like 
check against the central repository for plugin updates and stuff that I could be like, okay, man, let me get you over here. Let me get you up to speed. And you can check this every day and you can have one person take care of it. Also, I made a script to convert everything over from the back end. Um, mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with Drupal. Uh, it is very customizable. It, but I mean, you can use what it, like now it really doesn't matter. Pedro. Mm -mm. I'm forced to agree with FX boy because, uh, mm. as he mentions in, um, in on the Twitch chat, <laughs> hell described in one word, Joomla. <laughs> Joomla. And <laughs> as soon as I read that, I started reliving like the three websites that I made with Joomla because people wanted uh. to use Joomla. So yeah, we'll use Joomla. It's like, oh god. <laughs> yeah, no, I'll take WordPress <laughs> any day. I don't know, man. I <laughs> yeah. started out with my. Uh, cms hacking with php nuke so everything after that is like this is legos um <laughs> i got it i'm not worried about it but mm -hmm. then again we don't do anything terribly advanced uh that that's all the web dev stuff i do these days of like oh, i could open wordpress and install a mm -hmm. theme um yes <laughs> i installed yeah. it because very well kudos seriously major kudos to wordpress they actually made all of the cms management uh mm -hmm. even the stuff that gets close to the back end they made it very very easy very easy and you know i went from drupal to wordpress as well and i really love the the theming and how easy it was to configure all that but the new version you know i haven't used drupal in so many years and i it it's up to par now, so <laughs> just use what you like. <laughs> the, um, there's some good tools in WordPress for like stuff that we have to deal with, which is basically content management and dealing with caching servers with Amazon and Cloudflare and how that's rolled out, mm -hmm. which is really easy to use with WordPress. There's probably similar tools these days. So yeah, there's that. It's kind of brilliant. But I think we gotta get out of here. We can roll some credits. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> How's that for two hundred? <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> nope. Wrong one. Wrong one. <laughs> False alarm. There we go. Happy two hundred. Ho ho ho. Yay! Happy two hundredth LWDW. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. <laughs> Vince Seriously, Stone. Pedro Mateus. Yeah. And the Thank you. Aww. <laughs> Thank you to all our patrons for making the 200th episode possible. <laughs> to our executive producers and our producers, we love you all. And the fine <laughs> upstanding cannibals. Don't you worry. Uh, you can still buy something to injure Ven, and that'll just put the um, <laughs> <laughs> that'll put some pressing need on Ven to actually get uh, the. Find up Sandy Cannibal Wall 3.0 together. <laughs> Aww. Yay! 200. That's that's amazing. That's just... Wow. <laughs> 200. Yay. <laughs> <Ben>. <laughs> <laughs>